pals, I'm here today to do a sort of chatty discussion video. I have lots of thoughts I want to talk about in this video, but I haven't really planned them. So this is going to be quite casual and probably long and all over the place. So, I mentioned in January, I did a video in January talking about the 12 epic fantasy books I wanted to read this year. And I mentioned that I was interested in doing a couple of different videos. One where I spoke about the fantasy tropes that did and didn't work for me. And one where I spoke about um, the fantasy books I'd read. Um, or try to read and if they worked for me or didn't. That's Aldous just walking behind me. And I've decided to combine those videos because I feel like they're sort of in conversation with one another. Um, so I just want to say to start this video out that I love epic fantasy when I find a book that works for me. Absolutely love it and get um, a significant amount of joy out of it, probably more joy than I get out of reading literary fiction, which is what I predominantly read. But because I'm somebody who predominantly reads literary fiction, I struggle with the vast majority of fantasy. Now, just in terms of um, me being someone who predominantly reads literary fiction, I think the reason I struggle with a lot of fantasy is because I'm used to reading books where, in large part, the focus is the writing style. You know, I tend to pause a lot when I'm reading literary fiction and think, oh my god, that is just beautiful, and how does somebody come up with that? Um, and usually, if themes are being discussed, they're in a less obvious way, they're not surface level, and um, there's just a lot of depth to literary fiction. I have to think a lot more when I read literary fiction. Um, and also, the literary fiction I choose to read is usually very slow paced and the character development is usually very strong. I find that in fantasy, in particular the, the most popular epic fantasy that's really enjoyed and therefore published a lot and, and super marketable, is the writing style is nothing special. Um, you would read through it and just think that serves its purpose. I don't pause to think that's really beautiful. Um, the books are much more focused on plot and the predominant ones that I think sell well tend to be very fast paced which isn't something I love and I, I tend to find that epic fantasy can be really good at character development because they get to spend a lot of time with the character uh, epic fantasy is usually quite long in page length but also you know there's usually multiple books in a series and so you get a lot of time with this character but I think that in a lot of epic fantasy, even though you get more time with these characters and therefore you think the character development will be stronger, um, I find sometimes it's a little bit more obvious and surface level. So, I think because I'm somebody who, who tries to dabble in both literary fiction and genre fiction, um, I, I struggle more with, with finding the type of fantasy I want and I just don't think that is what the vast majority of fantasy readers are asking for, right? So that's not what's being published. And this is all my opinion, like I watch loads of fantasy booktubers um, and I love watching fantasy booktube and get loads of recommendations but there's always this part of me at the back of my mind that thinks no matter how much they say they're gonna lo they love this book, um, I'm always unsure as to how much I will love it because I'm aware that a lot of the fantasy booktubers I watch read 95% fantasy, they're like the inverse of me, right? So I would think they would probably read a lot of literary fiction and think, God, this lacks uh, interesting world building, this isn't very original, this is really slow, so um, it's it's sometimes difficult to, to want to combine those two things as a reader. So, before I continue with this video and um, completely like annihilate a lot of really popular fantasy series, I do want to say that when I find fantasy I love, I absolutely adore it. Um, and this video is more um, a plea from me for at the end, when you've heard all the series I've read and enjoyed and read and not enjoyed, of which there are many, um, and the tropes I like and don't like, you can be like, oh, actually, I think this series or this book would really work for you. Albus keeps coming back and lying on my notebook, which has, has my notes. So if you could not do that, that would be handy. So what I'm going to just open with is talking about the Realm of the Elderlings series by Robin Hobb, because clearly I love and adore it. Um, and it's filled with lots of tropes that I do and don't like. Um, and I think it's a good one to talk about and um, what tropes work for me and what tropes don't. And every rule I give here can be broken because if the books are good enough and there's enough other stuff in them that I like, then I can like look past some tropes that I don't like. So I'm going to start with the, the tropes that are more to do with the protagonist. Um, and Fitz, who is the main character in um, most of the books in the Realm of the Erdlings, um, inhabits loads of those tropes. And the first trilogy in the Realm of the Erdlings, the Farsi trilogy, is filled with those tropes, okay? I think she moves past them um, because she does them with an awful lot of depth. He's a super fascinating and complex character. Um, and there's so many more books about him in which um, there's so many complications in his life because he fulfills these tropes. 
So the first one is that Fitz is the chosen one, okay? Now the chosen one is somebody who is like destined to fulfill this task that's usually to do with saving a country or the world in this fantasy um, realm. And they are usually chosen by either a dream or a prophecy. Now, they're two elements I really don't like in fantasy. I really don't like when the narrative is taken out of the hands of the character and we're told that it's somehow fate because of this prophecy from the gods or, or this dream sent from the gods. And both of those things are present in the realm of the Erdling series. Actually, I found them quite interesting because the main reason you're reading is because you want to know what happens to these characters and the world but there's an overarching commentary on the history of this world that you discover as you go through all the books in the realm of the Erdlings and I think it is you know a really interesting thing to watch unfold um, and I also think the the prophecies and the dreams never take over the narrative um, and there's a big discussion in the realm of the Erdlings about the idea that Fitz can uh, okay I've got cat fur all over my face can sort of surpass um, these prophecies and dreams like that that they're the most likely scenario but there is a, another way and so yeah he is the chosen one he's also the secret heir so uh, a common thing in fantasy is that somebody is you know a, a peasant a commoner and they find out suddenly that they're actually um the descendant of royalty and they have royal blood um and fits is that he's the bastard son of the soon to be king he finds that out at the start of the book um, and because of that, he is um, kept close to the royal family um, and, and trained. So, Albus, please get off my notes. Thank you. Um, so, another part of Fitz's narrative that then is, is really common is um, some sort of training sequence. Um, I really enjoy this. I like having young characters in fantasy. They don't even have to be young, but I like having characters who um, are sort of going to school to learn some sort of ability or, or multiple abilities. Now I'll obviously scratching my armchair. Can you stop being annoying please? Um, and, and that is what happens with Fitz, okay? So he, he's learning, he's learning to be an assassin, which is one thing. Um, but there's also two magic systems within um, the realm of the Erdlings. Um, and one of them is descended through royal blood. So he has this sort of inheritance to do with him being the secret heir. Um, and, and he is clearly very good at this thing um, and then there is another one which is um, seen to be you know this illegal form of, of magic um, and so he fulfills like every type of character arc you can really have he's like he's the hero he's the chosen one he's the secret heir he goes into training he's super skilled at all these things and um, there's a certain weapon he's really good at using and becomes known for using and that's quite um, you know, a character that has an ability with a certain weapon or ability with a certain magic system, like Fitz ticks all of those multiple times over. However, um, he's, he really surpasses all those things. Now, I think what's becoming a trend now I've seen in fantasy booktube is that we're getting characters who are um, the reverse, and we're getting characters who are like the the baddie and we're following their story. And I don't think that's anything I've ever read before. I don't know how interested I am in that. Um, but yeah, all, the, all those narrative arcs of, of a character that are really typical, I quite like. Um, you know, the fact that Robin Hobb does them all and yet the books are still so brilliant shows that they can be done really well. I'm, I'm not saying that they're always done well because I'm sure they're not, but all those things I don't really mind other than the fact, like I said, I'm not a big fan of dreams and prophecies. I'll just line on my notebook again. Um, we also have um, the mentors, so there's usually somebody who is training them. These are um, commonly wizards or druids or somebody who is much older but was once somebody super important like a, an excellent fighter or some sort of commander or something like that. Um, that's again something I really like. Um, the vast majority of time they're men. I think it's interesting when they're not but the vast majority of time they are men. That's something I'm, I, I like. I like having that older character who um, you know has all these things they can teach the younger characters, I'm fine with that. Um, and then something else, this, I wouldn't necessarily say this is a trope, but this is something that comes up a lot in fantasy, it's a really complicated magic system. Um, I wouldn't say that the Realm of the Erdlings has this, there's two, like I said there's two different magic systems, I think they're both uh, not too complicated and they're things that you could sort of compare to a lot of things we've heard about before but somebody who does do complex magic systems which everybody talks about is Brandon Sanderson um, 
And based on my reading of Brandon Sanderson, I enjoy the magic systems he develops. I enjoy having a magic system when you need a glossary to like figure out what the hell's going on. I'm okay with that. Um, that's something I'd be happy to read more of. So when you're thinking of things to recommend, um, then yeah, feel free to come up with, with series that you think have a fairly complicated magic system. Um, I love a quest narrative. I'm, I'm down, I pretty much when I start reading a fantasy, I sort of want it to be a quest narrative, I think. Um, I've probably read some fantasy that where they stay in the same place and enjoyed it, but I think what I'm always waiting for is them to start going on a journey. <laughs> um, and something I do really enjoy, which isn't really a big part of the realm of the Erdlings, um, but something I have learned a love for from Lord of the Rings. Um, though I will say, I've got halfway through the two towers and DNF them many years ago, um, but I adore the films, but I probably will try and reread them. I just didn't think his writing style was very good, and I thought that they made really interesting characters in the film based on pretty much nothing in the books, like they were all super fat in the books from memory, this was a long time ago. Um, I really like a band, you know, when a band is formed for the quest and they have different skill sets um, and they offer different things emotionally to the group. Um, I really enjoy that, but it's not something I've read a lot of in fantasy. So yeah, I feel like a lot of the tropes I actually quite enjoy um, if they're done well. So I don't think that's necessarily my problem with fantasy. Something I will say that isn't to do with tropes, but just is to do with like fantasy as a genre and, and diversity, is that I think that fantasy historically, and, and probably science fiction as well, although I'm not a science fiction reader, um, has had a real problem with, um, with diversity. Um, a real problem with the inclusion of women as characters. Um, a lot of historic, celebrated epic fantasy series barely have any women. Um, and there is a sort of fairly well-known um, description of the woman characters that are available in that you usually get like the, the, uh, like the virgin, the young maid, um, the whore who's like, you know, made out to be a really awful character. And then you get like um, a witch or a nun or something of that type, um, who's usually an older woman. And it's usually, all, all three of those, these are usually in some way, um, discredited but the maid the virgin is usually held up a little bit um as though that is the only form in which women can possibly be celebrated in fantasy um that's something i have a massive problem with i think that's something that um, we're moving away from especially in the last five years of fantasy um so i'm assuming that a lot of the fantasy i'm more likely to enjoy would be more modern um but then there has been fantasy i've enjoyed that has been um published uh you know longer ago so I'm now going to move on to the book. So clearly I've read and loved um, Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderlings. I did start to try and read um, her other series. I'll put the first book up here. Um, and I did left it because it's really heavily based on um, dreams. There was lots of dream sequences and prophecies. Um, and also I think it was inspired by um, Native American culture. And I just didn't feel great about reading that from a... Uh, from a white author like Robin Hobb is an own voices so I so I gave up on that one um, so I haven't read anything other than the realm of the elderlings then I mentioned Brandon Sanderson um, when I first started getting back into fantasy when I started this channel like nine years ago I read the Mistborn series and I sped through them I absolutely loved them super readable um, but even back then I hated and this was not spoilers there is a character in the second book called Zane who I thought was incredibly frustrating, couldn't believe the editor had allowed them to stay in, ridiculous, unnecessary, hated them um, as a, not even like as a character, hated them as like a part of the narrative. I thought it was absurd, ridiculous, frustrating. Um, so even then, when I like loved them for everything else, I hated that character. Um, but now I look back and, so, so I read them, I also read Warbreaker, I read the first book in The Alloy of Law, didn't like, I'm not into that sort of more light fantasy, um, I'm not into heist stories, I'm also not into fantasy that has elements of our world such as guns and cars and phones and things like that, which is what The Alloy of Law is like, that they have guns. Um, from memory, it was a long time ago, and I also read the first book in the bigger series, which I'll put up here, um, and quite enjoyed, but also didn't feel desperate to continue. Um, so Brandon Sanders is an author I have an issue with, because I think he's super celebrated, 
Um, I think too much so. I think people really like his magic systems. I agree. Um, he has an interesting mind in terms of the world he comes up with and the, and the magic systems. Um, and I like that. But I think the writing is like just serving its purpose. There's nothing special about the writing. Um, I also think a lot of his books are quite cheesy. I think Warbreaker in particular and, and lots of elements of Mistborn are quite cheesy. Obviously, George R. R. Martin, super famous, um, the Song of Ice and Fire series. I watched the first series of Game of Thrones on TV and then read all of the books before the second se series came out. Um, gave them all four or five stars, but from memory, the last book in the series I thought was pretty weak. I never liked the new storyline, so whenever I got her chapters, I'd be like, Ugh. and I felt like this watching the series as well. I just don't find it, I find her frustrating as a character. I find her narrative really frustrating. Um, yeah, just don't really, um, you know, we have this sort of like white saviour character like leading um, all these people of colour and like that she's their destiny to like save them, I find disconcerting. Um, so yeah, but I remember enjoying them and I'd be, I'd, I'd be temp if there was another book ever going to come out I would reread them, but I don't know if I want to reread a series that's probably never going to be finished, so there's that. Patrick Rothfuss is, a, is an author I think a lot of people will recommend to me because Patrick Rothfuss is sort of um, described as a fantasy author who writes in a more literary, descriptive writing style and I agree with that. I think Patrick Rothfuss um, leans more towards the writing style that I want from fantasy and initially I read um, the two books, um, the first one being The Name of the Wind. I love The Name of the Wind. In the second book there is, again no spoilers, there is a really long uh, sequence I can't remember if it's just like a really long chapter or a few chapters where he gets pulled into this world where like he meets this sort of magical creature woman and, and like just has sex with her for ages <laughs> and it just felt like his teenage fantasies he'd just like been wanking at his computer reading all this stuff and imagining it and he decided as an adult to write it into his books and there was just no need for it um so initially that was the only issue i had with those two books however on a reread um i I find the character quite frustrating in that he does fulfil all those narratives of being like the chosen one and having a mentor but I think he erred on the side of like smug for me. He's so good at like everything. He's like the best musician. He's learning this certain thing at school. I can't remember when he's like really good at it. Um, there's a few female characters. They're all in love with him. Um, and yeah, on a reread I found um, his depiction um, pretty unbearable as someone who just moved through the world and was like universally adored by women um, so that put me off so I don't know if I will continue with those um, another series another author I think people might mention is, is Scott Lynch um, I read the first two or three books in the Lies of Locke Lamora series um, and there is a massive lack of female characters. There's one who's sort of mentioned in the background and she becomes a bigger part of the narrative. And the, the, the last one I read, there was a woman who became a, a main character. It felt like too little too late for me. And also I've learned that I do not like heist narratives. So there is no point in me reading Scott Lynch because that's pretty much what he writes. So they're all the super big hitters I can think of. So I mentioned James Islington. Um, I think I could continue James Islington and perhaps enjoy if the story doesn't continue to be really focused on time travel and dreams. Um, Peter V. Brett, I did a review of, of this book a few years ago, The Painted Man. This has got a different title in North America and the UK, I think. I love this. Again, I think it feels quite like James Islington. I thought the magic system was brilliant. Um, I like that we followed, I like the character we followed. Um, I like the quest narrative, but the depiction of women was awful. Like we literally had the witch, the horn, the virgin. Um, there's also a really horrific instance of, um, of rape in this book that's um, completely gratuitous, just there for a, for a shock in the plot and it's handled horrifically badly afterwards. Um, and that put me off ever continuing with any books by Peter V. Brett. And when I looked into his books, people said that his next book um, is, feels like it's a bit Islamophobic in that it represents a, a culture um, and, and makes commentary on them in ways that, that come across as Islamophobic. So I just thought, you know what, like, I don't need to continue with that. So there's that. Um, other people, other authors I've read. I'm just going to mention Terry Pratchett. I feel like Terry Pratchett doesn't really fit in with this epic fantasy discussion, but I think people might mention him if I don't. Um, 
I, I'm not a fan of like that sort of silly humour at all. I, I've read um, one of the books, don't like it, will never read a Terry Pratchett again. Completely get if that's your thing, you you might enjoy it. But I don't like that type of like light, funny type of thing in, in any books, but particularly in my fantasy. Um, and then these are authors who I, I thought I really, you know, would have a good chance of enjoying. Um, so N.K. Jemisin, I read the first book in, um, is it called The Broken Earth Trilogy? And it was a long time ago, um, and so I am tempted to reread this one and see if I've changed my mind. Now I want to be careful to not spoil anything in this book. Um, I like the, the world, I like the magic system, I like that it had some, some social commentary, um, particularly like this is a really diverse world, um, we're predominantly following female characters if I remember correctly, we follow three characters, um, three, three storylines. Um, and what I my you know, I read this a long time ago, but my memories of why I had an issue with this book is that there's one character who I think is the one who is, I can't remember if they're the youngest one or like, they're like a teenager, I think. Um, and I felt like a lot of their, their choices just didn't make sense. Um, as a character, they make really quick choices and they just, I couldn't understand why they'd done those things. It just felt like the author wanted the plot to go that way, but hadn't really figured out how to make the character's choices believable. Um, and there's also a part at the end of the book where somebody's on an island and I really didn't like that whole sequence. It just didn't feel like it really went with the rest of the book. Um, and there's a, a big thing in this book that I don't want to spoil that I think for me felt quite manipulative. Um, so yeah, there's all my issues with that. A lot of people made comments in the video um, I did which is no longer live because I just can't be bothered with dealing with um, those comments for years, is that um, people said I hadn't understood the book and that the book is a really interesting commentary on the history of slavery and empire, which I entirely agree with. And trust me, I definitely understood all those things. Um, so what I, what I think is that books can have a really interesting social commentary um, in a way that's necessary and still not be books that work for you as a reader. I don't think the fact that uh, a fiction book is making um, some commentary means that you have to just say, well, I enjoyed it. Um, and like the characters worked for me and the writing style worked for me because they just didn't. Um, so I've been tempted to try N.K. Jemison's other series. And the reason I haven't is because her other fantasy series is based on the protagonist being a child of gods. Um, and one of my biggest pet peeves, which I haven't mentioned, this will categorically stop me from reading a series um, and is the reason I am not a massive fan of like lots of Greek and Roman retellings is I do not like when characters in the book are gods. I just find that really frustrating. Um, so reading about someone who like goes to live with the gods, I just don't want to do. And I think her other series is more science fiction, so I might try that, but I might reread the Broken Earth book and see um, but yeah, that's one that loads of people recommended to me and just didn't work for me. I also tried The Poppy Wall last year by R.F. Kuang, I uh, got halfway through and DNF'd it. For me this felt like a book that was really on the line between YA and fantasy and what I mean by that is I felt the writing style was super simplistic and I felt that it was really angsty. Um, I don't think the age of the character determines whether a book is for young readers or for adult readers. But I do think the levels of angst do and how simple the writing style is. Um, and for me, this book read more YA. The point at which I stopped reading this book is where she goes to this cave in the mountains um, and starts to have loads of dreams from the gods. And I was like, I can't do this because this is clearly going to be a big part, big part of the plot. And I'm not down for it because, as I've said, I find dreams really annoying. Um, and, and also I'd got up to that point and had started to just find it all a bit too like angsty. Um, and I don't really think I like the way her character arc is going. I understand that she's more ma like maybe the anti-hero type of character um, and it felt like it wasn't going to be handled really well for me. So sadly, I didn't have that one. Um, another series I really thought I might like is um, the first book being The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Uh, I tried to read this twice um, and for me this is just entirely down to writing style. Um, Ken Liu writes in a way that feels more to me like you're reading just a history book um, and the characters are just there to serve the purpose of this like story he wants to tell in which he has a really great historical um, you know he has lots of um, thoughts he's always he's clearly come up with a whole world and political system and history of what's happened 
and he wants to tell all that and it read to me like the characters were there to just to just tell that something else we also don't like in any type of books is when you are with a character like throughout an actual day and that you follow the timeline fairly closely um and then suddenly the next paragraph or the next chapter years have jumped um but without there being a, a line that says like six years later that's just something that commonly happens in the books um and i came to a bit where that happened with the character and i, I just don't like that at all um and i also felt like there was a real lack of female characters and the one female character who was there um, was a wife who felt like she was there to sort of serve the purpose of like um, developing her husband's character and their story arc and I wasn't down for that. Um, I'm gutted because I've heard people say that the later books are really good but his writing style just feels really dry to me um, and I don't think that's going to change so I'm not going to continue with that either. Um, one book I have just read, um, which was from my list of 12 books I wanted to read this year, 12 fantasy books I wanted to read, is um, Jade City by Fonda Lee. Um, and the only real issue I have with this in terms of um, the plot is that, as I mentioned earlier, when I mentioned The Alloy of Law books by Brandon Sanderson, I don't like, I like fantasy that's like truly epic, um, and, and feels more historical I guess. I don't like fantasy where there's any type of modern technology um, and yeah this is set in a world that feels like um, Fonda Lee hasn't set, she said that this isn't set in any specific country but it feels like it could be like Taiwan for example um, and it is a world in which um, we're following two warring gangs um, and they wear jade on their bodies and that jade gives them sort of like a magical ability to be super strong or fast and, and all these things. And I think this series was really interesting for me, or this first book at least. Um, I tried to read the first book last year and DNF'd it because I thought it was written really poorly. Um, and then everybody raved about the, the second and third book so I thought okay I'll try again. Johnny and I read this series together um, and Johnny doesn't really read, he's probably read like less than 15 books in his life. Um, but when I did that video he said oh I think I'd quite like to try and read some of those with you. So we read it together and I think had Johnny not been enjoying it so much I may have DNF'd it because I just don't think, I, I do think the writing style is quite weak um, I do think that there's a lot of quite cheesy lines um, and yeah I'm hoping the writing gets better basically. So that's one thing I don't love about it. Another is that the, the touches of um, our modern world, they have telephones, like landlines, they have cars, um, I think they have guns. And I just don't like that. I, I much like my fantasy to feel... I read fantasy to escape this world and it feels like much less of an escape for me. So I will continue um, just because people have said the next books are so much better but so far for me um, the writing style doesn't really work and how close to our world the world is doesn't really work. Um, and then I also just read um, The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding and, and this fulfills lots of the um, things in fantasy I like. It's a really big quest, um, there is a whole a gang gets back together, this feels quite reminiscent of Lord of the Rings um, and I like this book. There are elements that don't work for me but I will talk about this much more in a review that I'll, I'll be doing soon of the fantasy books I've recently read. Um, but yeah I think that feels quite like authors like Jane Dislington and Brandon Sanderson so if you like those then I would recommend The Ember Blade. And then one other author um, that I've tried that I think people might mention that I don't really think fits into all these books but people might mention her anyway and that is Catherine Arden. Um, I don't think I'd class her books as epic fantasy um, but I did try and read her first book and thought the writing was pretty poor. Um, I did only get about 30 pages in so I didn't give it much of a chance. So this is one I may try and reread and revisit um, but yeah, I just thought the writing style was pretty weak. Um, I'm just going to mention now a few authors that I think might come up um, that I'm definitely not interested in reading. Uh, Robert Jordan, I cannot be bothered to read that whole series, um, especially knowing that Brandon Sanderson finishes it, can't be asked. I don't think the representation of women from what I've heard is very good, so don't want to go there. John Gwynne, loads of people love John Gwynne. I think there is a big element of gods in his book and I also don't know how much I like books that are like either really fast paced or have a lot of battle scenes. I don't think that works for me. Stephen Erickson, I think he has a really um, on, long ongoing series. That's what I'm interested to hear if people think um, how that fits into the sort of books 
I've described I enjoy. And somebody else who I'm on the fence about is Joe Abercrombie, um, who writes grimdark fantasy. I don't know if I've read any grimdark fantasy, um, and I don't know whether I'd enjoy it. So again, let me know if you think I would like Joe Abercrombie's books. So yeah, that's probably a really rambly, random video. Also, I don't know how much Juliet Marilia fits into this. Um, I would say her, more, her books are more like historical fantasy with a lot of romance. Um, but I do like Juliet Marillier, although I think a lot of her books that I have read have been like three star reads. Um, but I do truly love Daughter of the Forest. Um, but yeah, I just wouldn't say that Juliet Marillier is epic fantasy, so I don't think she really applies to, to the type of books I'm asking for recommendations for. But I'll just mention her in case anyone um, wants to recommend her. I read her books and I do definitely enjoy them. So yeah, those are all my thoughts. I've probably missed some authors out and like I say, I will link them, uh, mention them in the comment down below. This video might be really rambly and make no sense and be a nightmare to edit, in which case I apologise to myself, editing, and to you. I hope this made some sense, um, and yeah, I'm hoping that you can recommend some books to me that you think will work on my reading tastes, although it seems to be that I like Robin Hood and that's about it. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for watching, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!